Is that barbecue pulled beef over there? Who put that there? I did. You who did that? Oh, that's right. I did that. I did that. That that's the that's that was me. That's on me. You can have some if you want. Try again with shut my eyes. That's a little bit better. Still probably not a good idea. Look, I'm serious about you being able to do this. There's there's no reason why you can't get out there. I remember doing crock pot barbecue when I was single way back when thinking it was the best thing ever. And you know what? Friends and family, they enjoyed it. Because there was a certain amount of effort that gets put into food, and people can appreciate that. I think. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not everybody. But I'm serious. There's only one thing getting in your way, and I think it's yourself. The hardest part about barbecue for me right now is getting up and getting the pit going. But you do stuff like get it ready, get it staged, get to, you're doing the snake method on a Weber, get the snake all ready to go. You know, don't light it until in the morning, you get up, you season, or you pull it off, or whatever you're cooking, you know. Anyway, this is a chuck roast. Chuck roast is kind of like the mutt of the meat. See, like I cut a little bit too much there. You know, I'm going to pull that off. We're gonna make burgers out of that. I got a big pile of scraps in the freezer. But if you don't have piles of scrap, don't worry about it. You can throw it away. Nobody's gonna blame you because you cut you didn't trim it perfectly. We're gonna try and get a lot of this fat to render. We're gonna be smoking at uh, 225 and you know until it's done. I think it'll probably take about six hours. It's about four pounds of beef, you know, so I'm just going to try and get some of this hard gristle. You can tell if it's going to be gristle, you push on it, it's so like this fat running through here, you push on it, it's really soft to the touch, and then you get to this stuff here, it's really hard to the touch, that's not going to render down, but when we shred this all later, We'll just pull the fat out by hand when we're shredding it. You'll 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 see the shredding. You're like you'll like that, and then you'll have this big, thing, slimy thing, and just you just discard that. You don't. Nobody's making you eat it, you know. But if you can do a little now, it'll save you a little bit in the future. Well, I'm serious. I got I got friends and stuff that don't want to make their own rubs or don't want to make their own sauces. They just don't want the hassle, and you know that's cool. You know that's cool. That's fine. But it's kind of fun. <laughs> you might have fun experimenting. You know what flavors do you and your people like? How about your people? I mean, your friend group, your kids, your wife. What do they like? We like a sweet and tangy around here. The wife and I, we like heat, but the kids don't. So you know what? That means we don't get any heat. <laughs> Hopefully they'll grow up into it. But you know what? If they don't, then that's on them too. And that's cool. Because honestly, with with ulcers and stuff like that, we probably don't need to be eating all the spicy food. But, but come on, man. If, 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 if I'm not in physical pain while I'm eating like the hot, hot, spicy food, what am I doing? take this whole thing out here so absolutely go to a different channel and learn how to trim meat and how to properly use a knife because you see I'm always cutting towards myself don't ever do that you should always be cutting away
but don't ever do that either. <laughs> Just don't cut the way that I cut. Anyway, I'm going to call that okay for right now. So, we're going to use a bit of a mustard, mustard binder on here. Don't go too heavy on your must on your on whatever binder you use. So use Worcestershire, use water, use mustard, you know, whatever whatever you're using as a binder. I'm just, not, I'm, just I'm just bent on knocking this camera over. Cause you just want the rub to stick to the meat. You're not looking to season with this. The reason I'm using mustard is honestly, it was right there. I mean, that being said, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Worcestershire as a, as a binder because if you accidentally go too much on with the Worcestershire, then, um, I mean, that's a very powerful flavor. So anytime you're cooking and you're going, you're going to learn which flavors are the powerful ones, right? Like salt or vinegar, right? So this is the Clumsy Dog Zoomies Rub. I doubled it for this. And it has a pretty low salt content. So if you wanted, you could take your favorite rub and you could also layer this on there because the, the lemon peel and the orange in here really gives it a nice fruity, tangy, sweet with all the brown sugar as well. But this by itself is a good salt content as well. You know, it's just, it's good stuff. So. All right, so you see how much, you can't really tell how much yellow mustard's on there, but trust me, it's kind of sticky to the touch. And we're just gonna start, we're just gonna start seasoning. This is a pretty big chuck roast. It comes in just under four pounds, I believe it was. So don't be afraid of the seasoning. We're gonna be using the Weber kettle snake method so there's gonna be plenty of smoke rolling around it was like way too much in my hand but you know what I knew a guy one time and always told us as kids that there's no mistakes there's just happy little accidents so really nice seasoning on this side for me I think this is a really good coat you can still see the meat a little bit but for the most part you got good coverage on everything anytime you're using a, uh, a rub kind of keep it moving because the heavier grains like the pepper and the salt is gonna settle to the bottom of the container and then you're just gonna have like sugar and uh, orange peels and stuff like that at the top so just kind of keep it moving and then do that and then keep going all the way. Which I need some of this rub that's on the ground. I'm serious though. There's people that are like, I live in an apartment. I can't have barbecue. You can do decent oven barbecue. Now look, barbecue inside, barbecue with a crock pot. Don't go cheap. Don't make liquid smoke. Don't ever use liquid smoke. That stuff is garbage. It's just bad. You know, if you're doing in the house oven barbecue, then make it oven barbecue. That is what it is. Don't, don't apologize for it right and definitely don't add liquid smoke because I would rather have a really nice oven or crock pot ribs or oven brisket something like that than have something that somebody's trying to fake me out and make me think it's smoked and it's just this plasticky bad taste I don't I don't know anybody that likes liquid smoke if I met them, I don't think we would be friends. 
I'm just kidding. We'd be friends, but I would have to help you figure out that liquid smoke is not the way to go. Anyway, that's about how much rub I used for this four pound with a good coating. So you can see, I probably didn't really need to double this recipe for that. This would probably be a good amount for a brisket. If I'm doing a Texas style rub, I would want more pepper in here. And you know what? Because I made this rub, I can add as much pepper as I want to it. And then I know it's going to carry over and be good. So go out there and make it your own, man. There's zero excuse for this. You just got to try it. The only person getting in your way is you. Look at that, look at that clumsy dog zoomy rub. Man. Okay. We're right at two and a half hours. So I'm going to get a temperature probe in there so we can track the meat's progression a little bit easier. And also, I mean, come on, you got to take a look at it every now and then. And I think I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to do it like that. I'll do it a little bit more evenly. Jiggle, jiggle. All right, we're going to get this in there about that far. Just like that. Let's get it shut back up. Vents over the top of the meat. Keep running. We've been going between 215 and about 235, 240. It got away from me a little bit there because um, I had to go and do some uh, stuff with the turkeys, get them some food and water. And uh, honestly, I'd, I had stopped checking it for a little while there. But, you know, it's just one of them things. Not a big deal. Closed the vents a little bit. It came right back down. No problems. If the temperature ever gets too high up, you just open the lid and it's all gone almost instantly. So you can take solace in that if you need to. But again, you shouldn't be rushed when you're barbecuing. If you're doing that, then you're not doing it right. All right, bark is set up real nice. We're at the four and a half ish mark, somewhere around there. We're gonna add some more butter here. We're gonna wrap it up in some butcher paper. And um, why not? Honey. Why? I don't know. Probably be good. I'm gonna hurt it. Oh no, it's too sweet and delicious. Yeah, I know, right? So let's make sure we wrap it up real tight here. <laughs> 